Breaking news. Double or bullshit. Double or bullshit. Yeah, wasn't that insane, man? Multi uh, it's pretty cool. lightning strike on yeah. Statue of Liberty this weekend? Yeah, pretty neat. Awesome. I just figured that was a nice hey. example of what's going on in America. <laughs> pretty much. Liberty under attack. Everything's on fire. <laughs> All right, joining us to, today, he just popped into the Coney, so we had him come on up. He's, Combe County Prosecutor Pete Nacita. What's going on, Pete? How you doing, Charlie? Sorry to interrupt your lunch, but thanks for stepping on up, man. No problem. One of the nice. best conies down all the way, all the time, all the way. Look at that. How much? What a good salesman. Yeah. Love it. Charge for that. Get it when it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> and he did pay for his conies. So <laughs> no, they okay, don't look, no look, conies. There's a, there's a lot of problems with the media, which you know, Tucker Carlson resigned or quit a couple minutes ago. Try to find out, just text Parted them. ways, so Parted however you want to, however you, it's really interesting to see how they're parsing that in other media outlets. <laughs> I, I wonder what's up with that. Like, the Dominion sent three quarters of a billion dollars, but Smartmatic is still out. I, I don't know, but, you know, we'll see what we can do with that. But it is bothering me that you look at the Hunter Biden laptop story. And the media piles on because they believe the spy agency heads saying it's all the earmarks of Russian disinformation. It turns out this thing is coming from the Biden campaign, pushed by current Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. It was made up. The reason they did it is they wanted Biden to win. I mean, this, this thing stinks like Watergate and the media is not saying shit. It, well, they have egg on their face, right? A lot of the outlets do. So they're creating the, chaos, bro. They're supposed sure. to supposed to be making order of things and being truthful. Where do you turn? Yeah, but making things truthful don't sell cars, pampers, I, and whatever else. I think it does. I, I, I really think it does because people are wondering where to go. You know where you go? You go here. Yeah. We'll, we'll do more of that Thursday. But I want to start out with clarification. A clarification. This is from the mayor of Detroit. Not sent to me by the way, <laughs> sent to the editorial board of the Detroit News and then forwarded to me. So I went back and forth with the guy that wrote it, John Roach, the director of media relations, and apparently our relations aren't so good, but uh, really has nothing to do with the Detroit News. But you, let, me, let me read it because, again, above board, mayor's got some complaints, so let's explore this. Nolan... Just wanted to be proactive on a potential problem oh, with Leduff. <laughs> He's claiming in his current podcast and Twitter, podcast and Twitter, that the mayor lied about being present downtown on the afternoon and evening of April 15th. <clears throat> Leduff's statement is completely fabricated. In fact, the mayor spent much of Saturday afternoon and Saturday evening driving through downtown Detroit, Greek Town, and Atwater along the riverfront. It is a practice he engages in most spring and summer weekends. <laughs> on April 15th, he continually shared his observations on a real-time basis with Chief White as DPD was adjusting its strategies to address the crowds throughout the evening. This is something Chief White can readily confirm. The malice Leduff bears towards the mayor is well documented, and we normally pay little attention to what he says to his podcast audience. <laughs> but I have noted lately that his weekly column in Detroit Noon often is a rehash of his podcast material. I just want to make sure he's not allowed to repeat these false claims through to the Detroit News. I'm sending you this note in the hopes that should he try to incorporate this false claim in a future column, someone from the editorial board will check with us and get the facts before publishing it. Thanks so much for your cooperation, 
John Rhodes, Director of Media Relations. Now, where to start with this? Number one, you're driving around doing intel? He's on patrol. Yeah, directing strategies. <laughs> Top flight security. Okay, so you're <laughs> yeah. driving around Detroit at night looking for trouble. Okay. Clarification. Okay. But you didn't get out of the car. A guy gets dropped. He's dead. And you're driving around Greek town, but you don't get out. You don't get out. Why wouldn't you get out? Why wouldn't you be on camera with the chief of police? Yeah, show some leadership. Well, that's because he's busy Do strategizing we. in real time. Okay. You know, we're down a few cops. I'm giving it to the man. They're smoking the blunt on the corner. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I'd call him. I'd say, hey, John, why aren't you talking to me? What's with, with the Nolan thing? And he goes, well, why didn't you call me? I go, oh, you know, bad media relations. Well, in, in the future, we'll do so because that's interesting that you drive. Nobody saw you. Well, not the clergy, not the business, yeah. not me. I think he didn't call you or come directly to you because you don't have a boss here. Yeah, but like we're an honest news organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? but you can't. You call Mitz. You see what I just did? Yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll take your word for it. I said, well, nobody saw you. Well, it doesn't matter if they saw me. He's in the car. Yeah. Good. Get out of the car. <laughs> well, well, just to that, as a Detroiter, I want to say to the mayor, it does matter when we have this type of chaos and mayhem happening that the leader of our city is right there in the forefront and on the front line. You driving in the car does nothing. I didn't see you. <clears throat> you strategizing, right? Come on, man. It's more than you were doing. <laughs> Actually, I actually was walking. <laughs> you can't, I can't drive through Greek Town. It's blocked off. Now, look here. Let's, let's go to this here. First of all, um, it's not a rehash of podcast material. John, what happens is we run columns in the Detroit News, and we use them for basis of discussion here. So let's, let's get that right. And finally, the most important, because this is you cribbing our last show when we're talking about actual yeah, malice. Yeah. And we're talking about reckless disregard for the truth, right? And dominion and all that. It's not malice that's well documented towards the mayor. Mm -hmm. See, this is called the First Amendment. It's the first amendment. It's not malice to point out poor policing strategy, poor bookkeeping, sliding money to your girlfriend and, and pretend you're not, destroying emails, giving money to oligarchs, it's not malice. It's called the press. And that's how the press is supposed to behave. We're not picking sides because when that happens, everything goes to shit. Like this town, like Washington, the whole world's at war. I had yeah. uh, a drink with an Israeli last night. It's, it's a quiet, simmering war across the planet. And, and you don't get a true accounting of what's going on in the Ukraine. You don't get a true accounting of what the fuck we're doing in Syria. What the fuck happened in Afghanistan, the Sudan, right? Oh, the yeah. southern border. What, what? No, no, it's not malice, man. It's freedom of the press. The fourth estate. And the, it's not the fourth estate. <laughs> Look at it. What are the, what are the three estates? Uh, I don't know. You tell me. The executive branch. Yeah. Legislative. Legislative judicial. branch and the judicial branch. We might be the fourth estate, but nobody left any money for us. Yeah. A revenue source in the constitution. So the only way I think to make money in the long term is to be honest. We can disagree, but you got to be honest. And Pete, you've been slagged a million times in the press. It's politics, dude. Did, have, you, have you taken your workplace behavior class yet? What's that? You know, the one where like... That's only if you had an issue in the workplace. But right. when everybody else reports you for doing your job, and don't like to come back to work or maybe better off, don't like the way they got to be accountable, then it becomes a workplace behavior issue. I highly doubt it. Yeah. I don't care if I make the Journalism Hall of Fame. But what, to your point, what you were saying is, I mean, you know, journalists have always been fair. They have been um, even. They've given the, the story as it's supposed to be reported. I think there's been a change of how journalistic approaches, and maybe they should go back to the old school ways, which is report the facts, don't embellish, don't turn the story into something more than what it really is, 
just because you want to sell newspapers or I think they indicated diapers and baby formula. But if you're going to do it, right? Like a critic, people will criticize me. I put myself in my stories. I, I did the who, what, where, when, why. You know, yeah. I, did, I did the kid stuff. I've earned um, a point of view. But what I try to do when I'm doing my work is level with the viewer or level with the listener or level with the reader. This is where I'm coming from. But how do you get back to what somebody has already shot out in the press, exercising what they claim is a First Amendment? It's a skewed First Amendment. No one's ever talked about that. It's a different course that we are now on, and it's how to be hateful, disrespectful. Partisan. Partisan. Political. And it sells. And, and is hectoring. It sell? I and get a who's controlling down. it? Who's controlling it? It's the monies. It's the people that have the money that control the message. And those people that have the money usually own the stations and or are associated with the stations. Here's, so, here's this too, dude. I'm just writing this down because i got to finish my column this afternoon. Yeah. Uh, the press now, they're the ones that are the hectorers, right? We're going to hector you to, to behave properly. We're the scolds, right? You're not saying it properly. We're the thought police. How do you get, how do you get equal time? Somebody please give me that answer. When they launch missiles at you, how do you get equal time to launch back so that everybody knows that it's been a fair dialogue and that it's fundamentally going to not be skewed well the, or the thought abused. is this you're the prosecutor duggan's the mayor you command a microphone whenever you want it by by your position you're able to command an audience that's why it's set up in the united states as it is social media has brought in a whole new wave all of a sudden everybody has a microphone that's the the brave new world but it's not so when the government, time. the media, and spy agencies are all together colluding, colluding on creating thought, that's scary. It's not equal time, Charlie. Never well, has been, never will be. You know, there's a couple of members of the Supreme Court that would agree with you. Yeah. They're the conservative wing, Gorsuch and, and Clarence Thomas, and I'm hoping it doesn't get there because I, I, I know it pisses you off. I, I know it, it bothers you and that, Google's forever, but if those protections go away, then there's no way ever to, you, you, you see the mayor here using the word malice. You could see if I don't have first amendment protections, I could never go after those contracts. I could never go after the nepotism. I could never go after uh, what's really going on with the money and who's, who's connected. You know, you could, you could never go after the police for hiding murder. So when does the picture become the people's picture and not that of the politician it's up to the people then to pick what they want to be right and again i mean you can go you can go left you can go right or you can find something reputable in the middle that respects you i like this program and i like this audience because it's left and it's right and we talk to each other you know what i mean but even what read the comedian like you know in his comedy factually correct factually correct so i wanted to start out yeah. With the mayor. Okay. I'm going to take you at your word. I don't normally do that. Right? You're driving around. I think it's that's even worse than not being there. You were driving around. Right. What does that do for us as residents? I mean, I'm talking just as a resident that lives here. I'm looking to you for leadership. I'm looking to see what you're going to do to fix this. And, and, and Pete, I just want to say this. The people have to start holding these outlets accountable. It has to be a demand. Hey, you're not going to bring me the news, which I depend on, and the truth. I can't support you. I can't support your sponsors. You, you, the money control it. The money will stop it. And until the people stand up and say, hey, we don't want no more of this bullshit. Be real with us, or we'll make sure you're up out of here and go with who's being real. That's something like Budweiser just came through, you know, and now they're not buying Budweiser and stores aren't carrying it because the people have spoken and said, look, we're not going to keep this thing going. And I don't know if we're going to have the chance to do it all the way, but I know this. When people listen to one newscast, they hear a different story than another newscast, but yet the facts are the same. So, and right. to your point, Red, somebody's got to stop spending so that they don't have that time on the air to give you that nonsense news. Let me say, and end, end this segment, we'll go to 
word from our commercial sponsors in a moment. I have asked the mayor, hmm, how about you and I do a drive along? I drive along with you one night, one of these evenings, and see what you see. And you know what I? I don't think I don't think he's going to go for that. Why would that's a, it's a smart? Great, it's he's a, a smart idea. man. Yeah. That'll if he's doing what he says he's doing. Well, then that'll be a an want, interesting piece that people want to see and hear about. Let's, he don't, he don't want you distracting him from his observations of new strategies. Gawking. Hey, the more <laughs> eyes out there, the better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. So the. Clarification's been made, John. Mayor, the offer stands. Man up. Let's drive around. Let's word from our sponsor. I don't know why I'm in the desert in my underpants. I don't know why these wolves are following me. But I need sausage. A good wiener is hard to find. So make sure you treat it kind. Sausage. You may run with a pack, but everything ain't meant to be said. Sausage. No need to cross the desert. No need to cross eight miles. Who these wolves be? Get back, bitch. Sausage. Order a Coney kit directly to your door at AmericanConeyIsland.com. Well done, Red. Just an update. I lost that belly. I'm working on it. Because <laughs> you get like up your ass. There. It's working now, finally. We're moving sure. around. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you prove it? We were up till three in the morning doing that one, going back and forth. That, that was, yes. You remember, man? Yes. How far you've come. Also, uh, rem- I want to remind you, uh, if you're in the market for security cameras, Access control, Wi-Fi design and installation, drive-through systems, construction cameras, all things Wi-Fi, all things cable, railways, security, public housing. Oh, Greek town security. Uh, please uh, give XG Service Group your consideration. Matt Yaskovitz at 734-245-4100. We use them. And of course, ADR experience overseeing more than 250 million in private and public construction projects since 2001. ADR, competent, reduce your costs, increase the bottom line, cut through the governmental red tape. The consultants are experts in procurement and government compliance and IT. And I think maybe XG and ADR are doing some work together. Look at that. ADR, honest, ethical, smart. Call Barry Allen Tuck at 248 318 9424 for a consultation and get your shit fixed. All right, let me see here. Let's see if New York's hitting me. Supposed to do Cuomo tonight, but I, I can't do that. Got our own program. Let's you know, see. Mark, I don't know how you feel, but him running off to New York every other week just makes me feel like we're second string <laughs> I now. Down to work. But I enjoy watching it. So I do too. Yeah. But I am trying to negotiate with the network. Like, you know, the, the stretch limo we're getting from Ottawa? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why can't we drive around the swing states in America in our 81 stretch limo Fleetwood and that's our news truck. And we report about everyday Americans. Real shit. Not this MSNBC garbage, mm-hmm. bar, broadcast Barbie and Cable Ken horse shit. There's nothing that reflects our life. Real Americans. The, the struggle. Is, the news is dead, man. News is dead. So, again, I know you want to get to lunch, Pete, but the nursing home investigation... You explain what you were doing, COVID nursing home. So when I was in the legislature in the Senate, I noticed that I've got a mask on and I'm going to work and I'm doing my job. And part of my job is, is to make sure that the people um, have at least a fighting chance to keep themselves safe from the risk of harm of COVID. And we were all trying to do that, just not me. But I brought a bill in because I listened to the doctors, and I brought a couple of them. Dr. Washington I brought up to the Capitol, and Dr. Bison, who was serving with me in the Senate. And I asked the question, I mean, I'm not a doctor, but I know that if I've got a compromised immune syndrome where I have breathing issues or I have uh, issues regarding my uh, immune system, I don't want to be around sick people because I'm compromised already. I'm old. And as a result, I will get this infection and and, and die. And I noticed the deaths going up. 
So I noticed that the policy um, of the governor's executive order was do not allow anybody but a hub to take on people that were discharged from the hospital with COVID. <laughs> I mean, um, I've already got a, a facility with people in it. I know that they can't go home and try to take care of themselves if they have no one to help them take care of themselves. So they would go into a hub. And I was wondering why. So I looked at the dollars and, you know, I looked at what Medicaid or Medicare paid in these facilities. And then I looked at what the government, the state was given to these hubs through the federal government dollars. And it was like, you know, double. So there was almost an incentive to take on COVID patients. 5,000 a At least, patient, at yeah. least. So I looked at the numbers and where they were coming from and why this policy needed to be implemented. Why didn't we carry out what Cobo Hall, and I was still calling it Cobo Hall, but, you know, why didn't they go ahead and do what they said they were going to do? The they field hospital there with a the thousand beds. Yeah, they brought breathe. all these beds in. They had the uh, National Guard come out, set them all up. They had all the PPE that you wanted. And no one really went in there. They, they brought in all these machines that they, they, they forced the government to give them. And, and I'm wondering when they did it again, then at the, uh, what was it called out there? The, uh, uh, Nova the Expo. Showcase, yeah. yeah, the showcase. They did the same thing. And all this money was spent. And I guess they reworked the HVAC system here over at Cobo Hall. They spent millions of dollars out of it. Somebody ought to look into that. And at the end of the day, none of it was used. They were still putting them in these hubs. Well, I put a bill in that said no more of this because I just saw so many deaths and so much. So uh, what was the, what the bill say? Just so we the bill know. basically said you're barred from doing this. Okay. That you, you can't put you can't, you can't do this infected no people yeah. in a nursing home you can't do it with no healthy more. people and right. that you, we right. want to set up, bipartisan passed, by the way, a uh, so it, didn't, it didn't the first time. Let me tell you what happened. Well, no, no. She vetoed it. Okay. I mean, she yeah, vetoed she, the bill. Well, we. It was a bipartisan bill. Yes. She vetoed it. Yep. My state senator, Melanie McMorrow, yep. who wants to be your governor, she voted against it. I have no idea why. I do know why, because I did look into it. It's because they didn't want to pay the bill. Well, I, I gave it to the Health Policy Committee, and I said, I want you that are voting no on this in the committee Yeah. to put your own John Hancock on the words that are in the bill so that we can get you there to a yes. And no one wanted to touch the pen. No one wanted to get the pen to do this. That's right. After the governor vetoed it, it's like, and then Leslie Love from Detroit said, my mom is dying in a nursing home right yes. now. She's put in there. That started she to came to me and she said, Pete, I need help. I yeah. mean, I need my mom. So, so you, you, you sponsored the bill. We shouldn't be commingling old people in the yeah, nursing home. That's really what it It got be. vetoed. And then you... Be, you Leave the Senate, you are elected. No, 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 no. I took another stab well, at it before I left. Uh, I know, but I'm just bringing oh, it around yeah. now. And so I finally as, got it passed. As, as Macomb, yes. Now I leave the Senate, I come home, I become the Macomb County Prosecutor. So it gets passed when? It gets passed just before I left. What year? 2020. December, November 2020. Okay. Now I get home, and the big thing is I'm getting calls. I'm getting emails saying, could you tell me, like I didn't get to say goodbye to my mom, my dad, they died in nursing home, uncle, aunt, grandma, grandpa, could you help me? I want to know what was going on in there and how, when my mom had a private, how could she have gotten COVID when she never left the room? So you were looking into, did the governors, and it's they policy. can deny it all they want, but it's all there in black and white, the policy of commingling, did that contribute to death mm -hmm. that's what you were looking into not only just that charlie but also the fact that there was nothing given to the individuals to start the closure and the healing process because they didn't even get the chance to bury their loved ones properly well i i i, I also i didn't get I to watch you, my brother your brother last yeah your brother i'm sorry breath. again charlie i mean yeah, it's it's a tough time for everybody but the death rate was higher with the elderly and if we knew that then why wouldn't modern medicine Go ahead and say we can't commingle anymore. And we know that the death rate was at least forty something percent higher in these facilities than the government was admitting, and probably higher than that because they didn't count. They didn't require many of the facilities to even 
give data when the governor required that with her pen. They just yeah, ignored and, it. And nobody wanted to take that initiative. It was very strange that it seemed like I was, you know, a, a, the lone, you know, soldier to go up and say, who's talking for these individuals that don't have a chance to, t- to, to, to tell you what's going on in there? Nobody was talking in there. I felt bad for the workers. They didn't have enough covers. We to, tried. I think everybody. I think we did a good job on that. Yeah, I think you did too. You, you I know, do. I, I do. Up. So but, what? So, but I, so when I get home, m- months long investigation. Yeah. You ask people to send you. Here's what I did. I, I set up a website because each law enforcement agency needed guidance. I set up a website. The website was saying, "Here's a standard form. Once we receive it, we'll know where." the individual resided, plus what nursing facility they were in, so we can send it to the police department because prosecutors do not really investigate. They don't have the tools, the resources, and that's what police do. Refer and, complaints to the police. Exactly. Yes. And we were referring them just for purposes of, number one, talking to the people in the nursing facility, too. Was there any information that was gained as a result of their care, their custody and control in a nursing home when families couldn't get in? Was there something unique because no one was filming or videoing inside these facilities showing? But we were told that there was workers that left their jobs and then there was very few workers to try to care for our loved ones that were going back and forth from the COVID portion of the nursing facility to the non-COVID. Right. And there was curtains that were separating these. Shower curtains. Shower curtains. Now, did you try driving around late at night? <laughs> well, no, because I was, I, was, I was conscious of the gas and I was trying to be a conservative to not put all that money in my tank and drive around. Global warming as well, yeah. So electric car? No, I okay. don't. No. Anyway, so... You conducted the investigation, and, and you've determined that there's no way to... Right. We had over 3,000, I, I didn't stutter, inquiries just in Macomb County. And that website was, you know, it was every day there was more and more and more. People called, and they asked what's going on, and I said, I referred it to your local police department. You can follow up with them. They wanted a protocol, the police, and how to handle that investigation. And if as I, chief if, law if enforcement I, I, official in Macomb County... I put together a protocol for them as to who, what, when, where, and why. Cutting to the quick, you, yeah. you, you couldn't show that the governor's, not even in one instance, that the governor's policy led to death. Is that correct? That's correct. In the, yeah. in the grand scheme of things, when it's all said and done, even the healthcare workers that were in there said, although we saw how somebody came in that was healthy and stayed in their own room, they become unhealthy when they got the COVID because... there's See, that's the thing. There's no way to prove that. So if you go to Cuomo's New York, the attorney general, you got hammered, like uh, they're trying to go after your law license for you setting up a website. But that's exactly what the attorney general of New York State did. And here in Michigan, she's got what's called the elderly abuse form to fill out if your loved one oh, was in a nursing facility oh, and was that. abused. And if you go online to the state attorney general Mm -hmm. you'll see that she has the same kind of Mm -hmm. format as i designed in macomb county Mm -hmm. now there's no way on god's green earth see you were it was a red herring you were chasing a ghost you you can't prove any of that trans you you couldn't prove that this policy caused the death even in new york state the attorney general didn't try to do that she got him on you didn't follow through on ppe you didn't follow through on um uh, staffing and testing, but not that this directly caused death. Although you can statistically look at the hubs and the nursing homes and find where the clusters are. And we now know that they misreported the deaths there to the task force they paid for, the governor paid for, and that the, da- the data was all screwed up. We do know there's higher rates of death. But that's all we know. We, we can't say because you're co-mingled. That's, that's a jump. Why are you setting up these large facilities if you're never going to use them? How much did you spend on redoing the HVAC over at Cobo Hall? And do you want to do you, do you know? Uh, where'd the, the e- money come from? The email conversations I got in there. 
if you're not receiving Medicaid for, for these facilities or you have a contract to be living at the facility and you're not and you're staying at Cobo Hall, well, who pays for that? And the chatter, you know this as a former senator, the chatter was, we don't want to pay for it, right? Right. Close it down. So we, we get sent billions in COVID money and it's being used for everything but COVID. If you look at these nursing homes, they're putting in parking lots but no new HVAC system for the next pandemic. So Robert out. Gordon, that went along the former with former director of health and human former services, former director of health, and the human hush service, money, the one that left guy. and went back to D.C. The question becomes, why did you set something up that could never have operated? Who was the one that did this, knowing that they couldn't get paid for it? And why didn't they set the contract in motion with Medicare and Medicaid prior to? spending millions of dollars of taxpayers' money and mobilizing the National Guard to stay at the Anthem Hotel to go ahead and set beds into motion. Yeah, I know. They didn't want to pay for it. And now we got a convention center with a great HVAC system and a bunch of dead people, and there'll be no reckoning. So that's what you found out. Yes. I, I don't think it's a defeat. I didn't think you were going to get anywhere with that science scientifically speaking but it is fair to say that you looked into it and there's no way to prove that the governor's policy directly led to one death that's fair to say i can only tell you what modern medicine has said at the hearings and there was no other doctors there to dispute it which was in all fairness if somebody is already compromised and you're bringing in more sickness you're only hurting the cause and not helping it See, this to me is, is nonsense, but scientifically and legally speaking, you can't make that jump. But at the same time, you can't make the jump when the United States Cavalry is giving out blankets to Native Americans infected with smallpox, that that's how they got smallpox. You, you, you can't say that. We all know that to be true. And my gut, my brain tells me, absolutely. this. But I'm just still amazed. The lack of speed, the lack of import to monitor what was going on. And they, they failed in every way in, in terms of testing of the staff, in terms of the equipment, in terms of counting death, just everything. They, they failed. And again, the media that helped her do this, you know, everybody was just happy to be there at the press conference and, you know, this chick doing this over here in the corner and, and aren't, aren't we just cool and hip and in the middle of a national story? We have Lara. And they never went after it. We have Lara that's supposed to look over these Lara's facilities. Lara's a joke. And no one from Lara was working but remotely. So right. how do you go investigate these facilities inside to make sure that they're doing what the license says they're supposed to do? Right. And so later in the summer of 2020... When investigators go in, Lara or feds, half of the hubs flunked the infection protocols. The, the, the hubs that, okay, get them in there. That's great. This wing will be COVID. That wing won't. Don't worry. We got it. And then the inspectors go in there well after the first spike in deaths and realize half of them. We're bullshitting. Yeah, one more thing. Am I right there? 100%. But the frontliners, the ones that hand on garbage cans to protect themselves and their skin from touching another patient. Garbage bags. Garbage bags. Yeah. That's problematic because if you didn't even have the proper PPE, health, science, whatever you want to call it, tells you you're not supposed to be doing that job like that. And the argument would be, well, it was so scarce. We all remember that. I remember like calling my buddy in India and getting shipments here. But we know from people we've had on the program working, you know, the, the muckety mucks over there at TCF, yep. Cobo Hall, that they had oodles and pallets and, and hundreds of thousands of pieces of personal protection equipment that they didn't share. Yeah. So what was the purpose? I don't know. But the end of the day, somebody says, well, we did the best we could with what we had. Did we? Did we really? When you can't give a family member an answer on how mom died or how dad died or better yet, what was, the, what was in their mind? Because they allowed them to use an iPad. Most people, my mom's never turned one on. She doesn't even have a cell phone. She's 93. 
the ones that were in there, how did they communicate then? Was there anybody to communicate for them? Where was the ad budsman to go sit there and say, hey, I got a legitimate complaint. I'm going to, t- to, to check on it. They didn't because I went in those places. I collected the dead. I was there with elderly husbands looking in the window. They just rotted away. Sad. And you know what? In a, in a they game. can't get back that time, that moment. But we can learn from a mistake that was made. Exactly. exactly. And then try to go ahead and rationalize because I hope to God it never happens That's again. the problem, though, because everything's so political that we're not fixing. Again, I'm on record and I'll say it right now. I can't argue. Like, I, I totally argue with the commingling, but I can't argue with locking it down in an unknown time. In an unknown world, there was no other thing to do. But as time went on, and if you were actually doing science and data, that you would know that that wasn't the right way. Even we're never going to acknowledge it. Charlie, your point, even the hospitals had isolated units within the hospital that the only floor that that COVID patients would go on is the COVID floor. You keep it together. But they used to have islands years ago with leopards. Hospitals have HVAC systems in those rooms, though. Yes, so, there's the difference. Yes. There's the difference that they contain the air that wouldn't be free-falling throughout a facility. And this shit went on, I mean, for three fucking years. So, And three years, and I've seen almost nothing. And this is a, probably a pretty good story. I'm going to write it down. And I have before. How many of just the federally funded, the 450 Nursing home, nursing homes, right? How many have new HVAC systems? Where's the all hands on deck? What about the big boat? The big Red Cross boat in New York? Okay, again, but you see, you're the prosecutor. You looked into this. Do you know of any, at least in Macomb County, any federally recognized nursing homes that have put in a new HVAC system? I do not. And and, and the only one I know about was the one over at the TCF Bank or the Cobo Hall one that used some dollars through the feds and it was millions and millions to go ahead and they had to hurry up and hustle and get it done. And I don't know whether or not that money will ever be paid back. I guess not because it was used for, I don't know what purpose. I, I, well, I, we can personally tell you, I went down there and it was only a uh, homeless shelter being used at the time while the rest of the building was supposed to have been for a major hub. What, at, at Cobo Hall? Yeah, at Cobo yeah, Hall. You're using this warming center. But but I want to ask you this, Pete. In yeah. doing all of this, how bad was the underreporting? Because I know you had to do the research to find these things out. How bad was the underreporting? And what are you thinking of trying to put in place, at least in Macomb County and suggesting to other counties, to fix this underreporting and not realizing what's going on in the future? That's a great question. Every death certificate that was, um, I guess, harvested at that time. You know, they had all kinds of reasons for the death. And unless we get an inquisition with the coroners as to what the cause of death was and did they report them uh, or over report them because there was money involved with not only taking the patients into these hubs, but also uh, caring for them. And if they died from a COVID, there was federal dollars involved. Again, I I, I, I said I, that, that doesn't bother me. Like, if you want to overcount, overcount. Okay, just be consistent right. on how you're counting it. What what so, angers me is we're counting everything except where they were dying. Then, as you know, Senate Oversight Committee, n- nobody wanted to accurately count where the true deaths were, which were these facilities. So if we're going to count every motorcycle accidents and heart attacks, fine. If you got a touch of COVID, throw it in there, pay the money. I don't care. But why were you letting, we know killed old people. The average age of somebody that died from COVID in this state is about 75 years old. Where did they live? Again, you undercounted it. That's what drives me fucking crazy. And we now know through this whole COVID bullshit that these nursing homes Across America, 400,000 people a year before COVID died in the nursing homes from communicable diseases, meaning they caught an infection in the nursing home. They're they're dumps. They're cattle pens. In America, we're throwing our old people away 
Here was a chance to fix something, and Fauci never mentioned a holistic redesign of end-of-life care. And I know that's what you were trying to do, and you're not going to be able to accomplish that, are you? It's, it's way beyond a prosecutor. I, um, I can only tell you, at night, it would bother me because my mother is 93 right now. My dad, was, uh, my dad died at 96. He didn't die of COVID. That's pretty good genes. Yeah, I got some good genes. I got. You some mean you're gonna be around a while? I think I'm gonna. Oh fuck, man! You're gonna enjoy <laughs> it too. But I couldn't get, I couldn't get people to understand the heart of, like they used to say, a father can take care of a hundred children, but not one child can take care of the father. What I mean by that saying is, people were scared that we're trying to care. Caregivers were scared that they were going to get infected and die themselves. But, you know, when you enlist in the military and you go to a war, you don't run away from it. You took on a responsibility and a commitment. They were paying the workers even more. And I get it. This was the toughest job you can ever imagine, watching people die before your eyes. <coughs> but who was there to go and make the oversight to make sure that it was fundamentally fair for the patient mm. that was living it? Nobody. Nobody. But... I'm watching this this weekend. You know, uh, we do things great here. So you, I can't get a hold of the governor or the secretary of state or the attorney general. I can't drive around with the mayor because we got real questions. But they'd like to go on MSNBC and CNN and talk to Barbie, who doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about, right? And pretend. So here's a clip of Dana Nessel. Say, uh, state Attorney General, and Jocelyn Benson, the Secretary of State, on MSNBC talking about how we're, the, we're now the anti-Florida. See, Florida's fucked up, and Michigan, you know, we have background checks, and we have abortion rights, which is a fine thing, not against those things, um, but let's just have a look at the deep conversation from this weekend. Here. Michigan, a, a swing state, essentially becoming the opposite of Florida, as some in your state legislature are calling us. For those who are not as well versed in your state's politics, how did that happen? Uh, voters, uh, in listening to voters and respecting voters is how it happened. And now you have you know one state with a governor obsessed with attacking Mickey Mouse. And Michigan has leaders who are obsessed with protecting every citizen's fundamental rights and freedoms and ensuring businesses can thrive. Secretary Benson and I work hand in hand with the legislature and the governor to make sure that we're you know, promoting the best possible policies and legislation that's going to help the most people in our states. Hmm. There you go. Still haven't gotten an answer on the MSU mass shooter. So... How about that, Pete? Uh, you're a Republican. Yeah. What are you, anti-Florida, bro? No, here, here's what I see, though. You know, we've, we've failed in all different courses and directions of different policies. And policy is supposed to be dialogued by way of both parties. And you have to cooperate with one another. And then you have to call somebody out to say, what options, alternatives do you have if mine doesn't work? Because I used to think, if this is something I believe will work, if you have something better, bring it. Don't just say, no, I'm not. Bring something that, yes, I can, and I will, and we'll both be together on it. And the big thing is with guns. When you've learned from the MSU shooting that this individual had a case and wasn't assessed, had a mental assessment, just to see whether or not they're suffering from depression, suicidal thoughts, tendencies, or aggression, or on any medications, we're doing the wrong thing. And in Macomb County, there was editorials, and I'm asking the judges, because I am not a judge, I can't order nothing. I'm recommending these judges send anybody that is a felon in possession of a firearm or is pulled over with a loaded gun in the front seat. All you're doing is give them a bond, let them out, do what you get. But in three days, you're going to get an assessment. You're going to let us know whether or not there is a problem and if they might have gotten that assessment in the MSU, they might have learned that losing his mother caused him to get into a mental depression and state but, that could have maybe, maybe. So, so mental the assessments, that's, that's actually news. But here's the but thing. But it goes right in line the with the red flag laws that they're going to sign. They made up a fucking charge of him 
uh, carrying it in a vehicle because yeah. it's a misdemeanor, and he had no vehicle. He yeah. had a bicycle. Yeah. Sounds okay. like it sounds like they're trying then to fit the law. Then he smoked weed all through his probation, which Nessa wants to know. I have your answer, madam. Yeah. And you didn't violate him for three days. You didn't give him a felony because you know this. If you're carrying a concealed weapon, that's a felony. It is. And if you're convicted of the felony, you can never, no longer get a legal weapon. But they leave Charlie right from their bond hearing and go get another weapon. Right. The f- convicted felons go get another oh, okay. gun. But, but not legally, so no, the, the no, government can do at minimum do that. But they didn't do that. No, they did not. They didn't do that. So let's enforce gun laws. As you know, there was a, 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 a guy in Macomb County. He had gun charges. He didn't pick him up in time, and he ends up killing a police officer in Detroit. So there's a zero tolerance for gunplay in Macomb. You, you damn right. Well, it sounds that's a liberal democratic talking point. We need laws. Well, we do have. Forget it. We well, got we do laws. have laws. We got laws. We always had laws. The problem is, are we utilizing the laws with the mental health crisis to go ahead and ensure public safety? Are we using laws for talking points in an election cycle? Yes. Or are we going to use the laws to protect the citizens? I can only tell you what I'm doing in Macomb County, yes. and that is ensuring when they walk out that court, fucking pinko, either they go ahead and get the mental health assessment, which ties right in line with what those red flag laws are about, because I'm not sending a cop up to a door when somebody's already got a mental health issue to have him shot at. He it ain't sounds, happening. You sound like a Democrat. Well, you could say whatever you want. Right. Who I am is Pete Lacido, okay. and don't forget it. The titles are irrelevant to me now with these parties. That makes sense, and there should be the majority of lawmakers should be agreeing with they that. Should, I, I don't see how that's a political s- issue. I haven't seen How's the that's bill. partisan? I want to see the bill put in by these lawmakers that are forcing police to do a job without proper protection, without proper protocol. If I, if I go to the door and they don't open the door, what am I supposed to do? If I'm getting shot at, do I have the right to shoot back? And at the end of the day, do I have enough locker space back in there to take all these weapons? And what's the protocol? If I lose them, they get broken, they get stolen. And at the end, where is the clerk's money going to be to buy a new clerk to do all this work? And the judges are going to back up the courthouse. Mm. And I'll go on and on and on. Hold and at on. the end, where were these questions asked up there? He's getting into the nitty gritty of funding and, yes. and, and, and the shit we don't see. It's all broken. You're yeah. going to say, right? Yeah, that, well, you got to give money to enforce. You have to fund yes. and make sure the Where's resources the are there where? for the people well, okay. to do no their pun job. Intended. No pun intended. Where, it's like having a gun without the bullets. Where's the yeah. money? Yeah, there is Biden. Nothing. Biden sent Wayne County two hundred million. He he sent Michigan twelve billion. He sent Detroit eight hundred and forty million. He said use it for public safety. The courts are backed up. The police are underfunded. Right, a hundred percent. No probation uh, departments to speak of. But they want to defund the police instead of support them because <laughs> well, the, the, the president said to fund them, and we're not okay. Now let me say, let me go like this. Now that was a quick joke. Let me let me let me go like this. Okay, we're the anti-Florida. They have nothing to do with it. But okay, I sat up. I, we, we are the anti-Florida. Let me give you a few other things besides abortion and, and background checks on guns. In terms of the murder rate in America, Michigan is 13th. Florida's 19th. In terms of unemployment, the unemployment rate, Michigan's in the top 10 for unemployment. And Florida's in the bottom 10 for unemployment. Power reliability? Florida's in the top 10 for power reliability, and they have hurricanes. We're in the bottom five for... And we have rain. We have sunshine. The tax rate in Florida is the sixth lowest in the United States, state and local taxes. Michigan, we're in the bottom 10. The quality of life measurements about uh, the air, the schools, the crime, uh, greenways. Florida's in the top 10. We're in the bottom 12. Education, K through 12, and higher education. Florida's in the top three. We're in the bottom 12. We have the least transparent 
government in the United States by any measure. Of the 50 most dangerous cities in the United States, 50 most dangerous cities, that's violent crimes per thousand people. Michigan has seven of the top 50. Michigan has seven of the top 50 most violent cities in America. Saginaw, number four. Detroit, number six. Kalamazoo, number 12. Lansing, number 17. Inkster, number 29. Flint, number 42. Battle Creek, number 47. Jackson, number 50. Now, Jackson is a county seat. Flint is a county seat. Lansing is a county seat. Kalamazoo is a county seat. Yes, isn't it? Or I'm not sure about that one. Yes. Detroit is a county seat. Mm-hmm. Saginaw is a county seat. Mm-hmm. Okay. In Florida, of the 50 most dangerous cities, Florida has zero in the top 50. I go on. COVID deaths by state. Michigan ranks number nine. Florida ranks number 12 of the top 10. And they have more elderly there. Yes, twice as many. Yep. Of the top 10 states, of which Michigan's ninth, Michigan's the only state that had lockdown policies. So this tells you about our nursing homes. This tells you about our health care. Does it not? Yep. Okay. And finally, according to you know the van lines, the, the moving van, I think it's Atlas, of people moving out of the state, right? Michigan is top five for people moving out of the state. Florida is the top five for people moving into the state. So quality of life, safety, education, healthcare, work, taxes, MSNBC, go fuck yourself, stay out of the election, We'll decide, and your disinformation needs oh, to boy. go. Because Pete's more liberal than you somehow. <laughs> Pete <laughs> wants the gun laws enforced. I hope and I pray that before they go ahead and have take effect, which is in January, that they redo what they could have done to make it more strength if somebody has a mental illness and or a threat to themselves or others, don't you want to remove that as the problem? Leave the guns in check. The person will only use the gun if they're around the gun. And they have a right to take them in. We have laws on that, too, to go do an evaluation when so, they so are you, a threat to themselves or others. You're into the red flag law. I have to be because it's going to, it's going to create a huge issue when police in my town as it relates to the 28 different law enforcement divisions are going to a door knocking on the door and saying open up we're here to take your weapons if the person has a mental disable disability or is mentally uh, suicidal or something you may see that they're going to start using those weapons and now we're creating more violence instead of curbing the violence and I dig this. I'm gonna. I'm, we're gonna wrap it up. But again, if you strip, like the conservative wing of your party is not really gonna be down with that. But you're in really surprising places in this country. If you, everybody calms down and talks rationally, we don't even have to agree. But you'll find we agree a whole lot more than we than, disagree. Than the media has given us credit for. Yeah. Do not let them divide us. And I'm sorry to interrupt your lunch. Let me let you, I'll, I'll buy you a nice hot meal. Thanks for, thanks for coming Thank you, Charlie. Right. Thank you, Charlie, for having me. I appreciate it. Red, yeah. thanks for coming yeah. in. Thanks, hey, Red. Thank you. Thank thanks you for Mark. coming in, Pete. Enjoy it Mayor always. Lee. Uh, sorry, you were driving around. I'd love to drive around with you. Give, give me a call. You got my number. I drove by the Coney Island about two minutes ago to check out the scene. <laughs> All right, we'll see you Thursday evening, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody.